I did not want this channel to become the anti-Michael Heiser channel, and I still don't. I think Mike Heiser was right about a lot of things. He was right on most things that he isn't famous for. For instance, he did not believe, I, from what I can gather, in the Augustinian doctrine of original sin, inherited through physical descent from Adam. And I don't believe that either. I don't think the Bible teaches that. I agree with him on that. The two powers of heaven stuff, I think he and I agreed on that. And really, I've listened to some of his stuff. When he's not talking about the unseen realm, I generally agree with him. And I expect to see him again when I pass on into the next life. And when I see him there, I believe he is going to thank me for doing what I'm doing and showing how the unseen realm stuff is incorrect. I, when I see him in heaven, I believe he's going to thank me for that, that sort of thank you for, for cleaning up this mess. I kind of got into, I really think his intentions were good. I don't think he's, he was a, one of those false teachers. He was someone that I have a disagreement about that. I think he got on the wrong track because he was immersed in what he was a, an expert. He, he, that means he did a deep dive into it, did a deep dive into what the views of second temple period Judaism. And what he did was he took those views and, and sort of went native, you might say, in his theological thinking. He was Im so immersed in what they believed and what they learned that it just it sort of crept into his theology. Whereas I think they were wrong. I think Christ and the apostles are the Jewish people we should listen to. In the second temple period Jews and in the first and second century Jews, those were the ones that oppose Christ. Their theology was opposed to Christ's theology. And so we should not learn from them, at least as far as understanding what the scripture means. We can learn from them as far as uh, the customs and the details of the context of the scripture. But understanding the big picture, it's totally to be found in Christ. And I, so, so for instance, you know, we had in Deuteronomy 32, when Mike Heiser thought, Dr. Heiser thought that the sons of God that were going to inherit all the nations or the nations were divided according to them and their number. I think he's talking about at the time Israel and now the church. I think that, that God had in mind the number of people who would be his and, and where they would be. And he made allowance for them and the nations that it's all basically, it's all about Christ. And therefore, if we are in Christ, we share and participate in his story. Like it says in one of the Peters, we partake of the divine nature when we're in him. And I think the sonship of God is more exclusive than the unseen realm theology. I won't even call it Mike Heiser's theology because really I only had, I made it a policy and I'm breaking the policy with this video. I would only make two videos where I mentioned people by name and talk about where I think their theology is mistaken. I wouldn't do any more than that because I didn't want it to become known as a channel of against any one person. Now I've done that with some others and there wasn't much objection. I don't think they have as big or as devoted a following as Dr. Heiser had, but I would put the videos up there. And honestly, the number one most watched video in this channel and the number two are the two that I had showing where I thought Dr. Heiser was wrong on Psalms 82, Deuteronomy 32. Those are the two most watched channels. I took the most watched video on my own channel down twice and left it down for a while, hoping that it would change the algorithm, hoping that it would show some of my other videos to people more because I have a message and it's about the Christ-centered model for early Genesis. It's not so-and-so was wrong. It's not Mike Heiser was wrong or anybody was wrong. It's about Jesus is right. That's the message of this channel. I thought it wasn't getting out because all the algos were showing people were his stuff. So I took it down and all it did was they didn't show anybody anything. So, and, and people started asking for it. Hey, you, you had a, hot, a video about Psalms 82 and why Dr. Heiser got that wrong. Where is that? We want to watch that. So I put it back up and I guess it's going to stay up and it's just the algos are going to show what the algos are going to show. But that's not what the channel is about. It's about a Christ-centered theology for early Genesis and sonship 
for one thing, Christ is the one unique son. When it, it says in the New Testament, the only begotten son, that word there can better be translated, although begotten for technical reasons on the nature of the Trinity. Please see my video about that. Begotten is just happens to be a very good word because if the son's not created, if you have the father, you have the son due to some technicalities about the nature of God, which see that video if you, if you want more details. Uh, but the point is, it's not like he's got a son who incarnated as Jesus and he has all these other sons that are spirit beings and we can be sons too if we are in Jesus. No, the sonship of Jesus is unique and we can be participate in that and be his sons too in Jesus. It's about exalting Jesus. It, the unseen realm theology wanders back around to Jesus at the end. But I'm talking about a theology of early Genesis where Jesus said in John 5, 46, Moses wrote about me. If you don't believe me, then you don't really believe him either. That's just how central Jesus thought the work and person of Christ was expressed in Moses. And obviously, if you have a view of early Genesis that is similar to that of the rabbis in the first and second century, and honestly, I'm talking about young earth creationism too when I say that. If you think the the light of the sun is about this ball of fire in the sky instead of the son of God, that's not a Christ-centered enough view of early Genesis. But I digress. The point is the unseen realm theology is wrong. And, I, and, and when I started talking to people about things, I, I really almost did this in self-defense. It's not like he can teach what he teaches and I teach what I teach and it's okay. People that were exposed to the unseen realm theology couldn't understand what I was saying. They couldn't understand when I was trying to describe a theology of early Genesis that makes it about the work and person of Christ. And, and I, I, I saw the wall go up and they said, well, what you're saying can't be right over here because of this, that, and the other. And I would go look at this, that, and the other, and that's not well grounded either. But you, if you go to show them where one thing is wrong, they just say, that can't be right because I know too many other things that support it, that contradict it. Well, no one of those things can stand on their own. And I think I mentioned this in my video. You can look it up about a very different idea of who the Nephilim were and who the sons of God were in Genesis 6. A very different idea about uh, not, not only Psalms 82, but the Job and Job 38 and what have you. I will put a link of videos and articles in the description section of this video if you're interested in exploring each of these planks and why each of the planks, when they support each other, it seems like, okay, we have a, a ironclad case here. It's really strong because all these planks support it. But then you go and look at each plank and no one of them can stand on its own. The, the structure really comes down. It should be replaced by another structure. And I believe that structure is the Christ-centered model for early Genesis, which I'm teaching, which my book is about. And so early Genesis, the revealed cosmology is the name of that book. If you're a glutton for punishment, uh, it's, it's pretty dense. 400 pages. It's pretty dense. If you're a glutton for punishment, you can read it. Otherwise, you just enjoy the videos and, and catch it while you can. But I wanted to set the record straight this morning. I It's not that I have... Uh, uh, an animus towards Dr. Michael Heiser. Like I said, I hope to see him again in heaven. I believe I will see him again in heaven. And when I get there, he's going to thank me for what I'm doing. I hope that you, uh, or even the, no matter why you came to this channel, even if you came here to rebuke me for being mad at Dr. Heiser, or if you came here because, yeah, I want to get that guy, Michael Heiser. I hope, or I want to look for teaching that exposes where that guy, Michael Heiser was wrong. I, I hope that you go beyond that. You know, there's, there's, it's like, I don't have a natural uh, sort of group that I would associate with because I have a very traditional way of looking at the scripture. And Mike Heiser had a high view of scripture. I believe too. I sided with Mike Heiser more than I side with these scholars that I do not think have 
a high view of Scripture. I just didn't agree with him on the interpretation of that Scripture in this one area, which he made into a theme, because I think the theme is pointing to the work and person of Christ from Genesis chapter 1 on. I've even got a video that shows 12 times Jesus is referenced in the first creation account, and really it's the only creation account. There's only one. The second one is not really a creation of the heavens and the earth, but that's yet another video. But my point is there's there's a dozen references to the work and person in Christ in that first account in Genesis. It's about him. So uh, a traditional person might come here and say, yeah, I've been hearing this unseen realm stuff, and I want stuff, someone to counter it. But the rest of my theology, I, I'm I'm satisfied. I, I don't want to look at a new version of a narrative about what early Genesis means. And the other people that might come here and say, I'm a fan of Dr. Heiser. I'm a fan, and I'm going to go tell that guy that he's being unchristian, he's unloving, why, why does he have to tear people down, et cetera, et cetera. And, and early on, you know, they would come and say, well, then you need to debate Dr. Heiser and he'll tear you up. And I knew that Dr. Heiser was, you know, big. I didn't know he was sick at that time. I didn't know how sick he was, but I knew that he was big and I was small. There was no reason for me to go on and do a debate with him. He, he wouldn't, there was no reason why he should accept a debate with basically I'm a layman. I probably can't make as many videos for the next couple of months as I have recently because I, I have a new job that's very challenging. It's a secular vocation. And I, I knew that I didn't need to do that. But I will say this, whoever wants to be claim the mantle of his successor on this unseen realm stuff, yeah, I'll debate him. Fine. It would just, not, you know, I, I'll, I must break you or anything like that. But I, I think I have a, an alternative theology that is really the theology of Jesus on early Genesis. And you can't believe that and the unseen realm stuff too. So yeah, let's reason together. So I tr thought that would happen on this channel. Like I would, and probably if you go to those two videos, you'll see so many debates on that channel. But in truth, there was a lot more debates on that channel because people would come on there and they would ask me, uh, they would challenge me on something and I would start to dialogue with them, sometimes a long dialogue. And and what happened a lot was Dr. Heiser's people, they would go a long way. They would see they didn't like the way the discussion was going and they'd simply delete the whole thread and all my work was, was lost and no one else could benefit from it. So it even got to the point where on one of them, I said, look, you're making a comment. I'm going to paste your comment and I'm going to start the thread. That way I'll know I won't delete it. And I, I did that for a while. I got out of the habit. And then just recently, you know, a, a fellow came along and another one said, well, you know, Dr. Heiser is right. I, I've been studying really he implied he studied with him. Uh, I've been a Bible scholar for 40 years. And, and here's why he's right on that. And I started going into the details of the text and responding to him saying, well, no, look at this. Here, here's why that isn't correct. Let's go a little further. And, he, and then, boom, he did the same thing. He deleted the thread. So my work was lost. And I'm, I'm really, it's not there to, I'm here to benefit people. You know, I'm here to, to get the message out about the Christ-centered model for early Genesis, how the church had been getting it wrong for 2,000 years. And that has consequences. We're losing young people in part because we're getting Genesis wrong. There's a lot more to it than that. But my point is, a video debate where, you know, I've got the video and they've got the video, that won't keep happening to me if that happens. So it's okay if that happens. Now, uh, I, I want to sum up here. I want I got this off my chest and I, because I received, you know, a lot of people, they, they think I have some animus against the man. I don't. I agreed with many things he said that he was not famous for. And what a dangerous spiritual position that is to be in. I hope I'm never in that position where I'm getting fame, I'm getting accolades, I'm getting fans from something that is just not quite right. It takes the focus off Jesus and put takes the focus off us and our destiny, which is to be sons and daughters of God. It's a high destiny. We're to be sons and daughters of God in Christ. 
And that does, we don't need a theology that dilutes that. We don't need a theology that distracts from that. That's what happened to the Pharisees. And when Jesus cited Psalm 82, they wanted to kill him for saying, I'm a son of God. And the implication was they were all, they, if they were administrating the word of God in the earth, if they had received the word of God, they were supposed to be God's sons, but they didn't receive it in faith. So it couldn't produce the new life in them, couldn't be born again with a new life that is God's son or God's daughter. Not above the angels. The first two chapters of Hebrews make it clear that the sonship is one thing. The angels are one thing. The son is another. And we can live in a sonship. And that needs to be our focus. I, I do thank you for listening. And may God bless you.